We got shirts on sale. Express your evolution and starter Pokemon love by buying an evolution family shirt in which one starter shirt? Link will be in the description below. Two best teams in one weekend? Uh, yeah, I'm a madman. At the end of Kanto Remastered, I said I was gonna do more remastered teams in the near future. Well, the near future was more near than originally, so, uh, the best team for Johto. This video was a huge disaster, and in my opinion, one of the worst best teams I've ever made. It was the first one originally, so yeah, there was a lot of mistakes. I can sit here and list some of them, as a matter of fact. We had trade evolutions, no movesets for the Pokemon, had dumb reasonings for some of the Pokemon, and we even had bad overall Pokemon choices. We had a lot of mistakes, and today, just like yesterday with the Kanto best team remastered, I want to do a Johto one as well. This video is going to be a huge cleanup with a lot of new things added, but first, let me explain what a best team is for all the new viewers out there. A best team is a team of six Pokemon that is designed for the absolute best performance for its said Pokemon game. The team revolves around a best starter choice and is then made into a team revolving around that said best starter, in our case, Cyndaquil. I still stand by the decision that Cyndaquil is the best Johto starter for Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. I will get into that more in a few minutes. Each team member is designed to do well against certain gym leaders, the elite four members, champion, rival, and the evil team leaders. In the end, we have a team that does well against all the most important battles in the game. When making this team, we do provide movesets for each of the Pokemon. On this team, to make it as clear as Crystal, now making a pun, we will not be including trade evolutions. So no more Alakazam or Machamp, so now you guys can't complain. We will also not be using legendaries as I think they make the game easy. It turns into an Entei solo run or Lugia solo run that my seven year old self could comprehend perfectly. One last very important factor I need to mention is that this time we're gonna be covering Kanto. I understand I don't always cover the end game, but I mean, come on, how do you not? cover the end of the Johto games. It has eight more gym leaders and red. Not to mention I also played it in the original best team for Johto playthrough. Anyways, that's pretty much what a best team is and what is gonna be on this remastered Johto team. Let's now hop into making this team. Starting off this refresh team, we have Typhlosion, the original best team for Johto starter. I know on the Kanto best team, I didn't really explain a lot about Bulbasaur, but here I will because there is a difference between Remix for Alligator and Gen 2 for Alligator. Gen 2's for Alligator has special water attacks, that's all you need to know. Meganium with how cute it is, it's nowhere near as close as performing as well as Typhlosion and for Alligator. Fire typing in Johto just dominates everything. Typhlosion is also one of the best fire types you can get in Johto as well. It's got awesome speed, special attack, and actually gets decent moves for its dominant stats. Fire is special in this generation, meaning attacks like Flame Will Thrive, along with Fire Punch, two great attacks it can get access to before Flamethrower. Any Steel type gets destroyed by Typhlosion and a whole bunch of other Pokemon. Coming into the moveset of this great starter, we have Typhlosion's best fire move it can get until Flamethrower, Fire Punch, which can be obtained really early on in the Golden Rod Department Store. Note that Kolava can't get Fire Punch, but pick it up early just for the convenience. Until you get Fire Punch, use Ember and then give it Flame Wheel. The next move is Thunder Punch, which can once again be obtained from the Golden Rod Department Store. Thunder Punch is for our types, no duh. Iron Tail is next because of coverage. The team for Iron Tail can be obtained from Jasmine after defeating her. The last move we will be giving Typhlosion is Sunny Day. This team can be found in the Radio Tower on the last floor after you beat the Radio Tower. With these moves, Typhlosion is great against Bugsy, Jasmine, Price's Pile of Swine, Will, Koga, Karen's Vile Plume, Lance's Flying Types other than Dragonite, Rock's Amistar, Misty's team, but I wouldn't, that's a bad idea. Erica, Janine's Ariados, Venomoth and Crobat, Blue's Pidgeot, Gyarados and Executor, Silver's for Alligator, I guess if you need to, The Rocket Admin's Vileplume and Red's Venusaur, Charizard and Blastoise. This is a huge list. I told you guys Typhlosion was amazing. Okay, this is something that should have been done from the beginning. This best team's flyer is Fero. Not Pidgeot, Fero. Pidgeot is awful in this playthrough. Awful. It doesn't nearly have as good a stats as Fero does. Wing Attack is also the only good flying attack it gets at level 33. Fero gets Drill Peck and has over a 30 stat base total into its physical attack than Pidgeot does. Oh, big deal. Pidgeot has one more speed stat than Fero does. Fero has 100 base speed and 110 physical attack. That alone is enough for me to put Fero on the best team. Dodrio, of course, would be the better choice, but you don't get Dodrio until after Claire, so that's pretty much thrown out. Skarmory is originally exclusive, it's just a blood situation. Fero is the best option. We got and we need a flyer. I think it does the job best. Hopping into Fear's moveset, we got Drill Peck, Return, Agility, and of course Fly. Drill Peck can be learned via level up at level 30. For the meantime, use Peck until you get Fly, and then after, use Drill Peck. Drill Peck is the best option because it doesn't take two turns. Return is a TM given to you on Sunday at the Golden Run Department Store. If you have a Pokemon that is high enough happiness, the lady will give you that TM. She can be found on the TM floor inside of the store on Sundays. Agility is just there because who knows? You may need some speed investment during battles. Also, Jodo sucks at giving Pokemon great move pulls. Lastly is Fly, and Fly is there will be because we don't want to walk anywhere. 
It's a server convenience. With these moves, the Feral Line does great against Bugsy, Chuck, Will's Executor, Koga's Venomoth and Ariados, Bruno's Fighting Types, Karen's Vileplume, Erica's Team, Janine's Bug Types, Blue's Executor, the Rocket Executive's Vileplume, and Red's Venusaur. If Typhlosion is ever down, Fero can take the slack. Don't sleep on Fero at all. It can pull you out of a pinch, especially with moves like Return and Peck. Coming back to the best team for Jeto is Ampharos for Pokemon Gold and Silver. For Crystal, we have Electabuzz. Magneton sucks in Gen 2 so we can't use that. Electabuzz is better than Raichu, plus stones are a pain to get in Gen 2, and Mareep isn't available in Pokemon Crystal, which is really stupid. I know I said to use Victory Bell in Generation 2 and Pokemon Crystal, but don't do that. My 2016 self was a goofball. Electric Pokemon come in clutch though in Generation 2, because a lot of flyers are in this game, and a lot of bird keepers and water trainers are as well. Ampharos is your best bet for Pokemon Gold and Silver in terms of electric Pokemon. Crystal, your best bet is Electabuzz, which can be obtained as an egg from the daycare man on Route 34 below Goldenrod City. You have a 12% chance of any L kid, so good luck. Who knows, you may even get a shiny. If you get a Pichu, don't use it, it's not as good as Raichu. It outclasses Raichu for miles, I promise you that. Plus it gets access to all the elemental punches. What a champ. Ampharos is still good for gold and silver though. Trust me on that one. For movesets for Ampharos, we got Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, Light Screen, and Thunder Wave. Weird moves I know. Yeah, they suck aside from the first two. Gen 2 really cuts our options, trust me. Thunder Punch can be taught to Flaffy right when you get to Goldenrod City. Head to the department store and pick up that TM, or Ampharos can learn it via level up, but I would recommend getting the TM early. Also, pick up Fire Punch from there as well. That can help with the grass resistance. Light Screen is just there because of filler, and who knows, maybe the special defense will help you. Thunder Wave is there because being able to cripple down an opponent's speed always helps out, plus it makes it easier to capture a Pokemon when it's paralyzed. Electabuzz's moveset is so much more superior. We got all three of the elemental punches, and for the fourth move, we got strength. Yeah, strength. I told you guys that Generation 2 has bad move availability. The cool thing about Elkid is that it gets Thunder Punch immediately when it hatches from the egg. Then you only have to buy the other two elemental punches from the Golden Run department store. Strength is obtained from Miss Taylor in the Olivine Cafe, all the way to the left side of the city by the beach. Do not forget strength before you head over to Scenewood, or else you will have to surf all the way back to get it, and I can tell you how many times I've done that. Also, one more thing I should mention is that if you would like to get rid of Thunder Punch later on, you can. Electabuzz gets Thunderbolt via level up, which most Ultra Pokemon do not get, and that's actually very, very nice. With moves like this, Ampharos is its best against Chuck's Polyrath, Price's Water Pokemon, Will's team, Koga's team aside from Muck, Karen's Murkrow and Vileplume, Lance's flying types aside from Dragonite, Rock's Amistar, Misty's team aside from Quagsire, Erica's team, Janine's team aside from Weezing, Blue's flying types and Executor, Silver's Golbat, Magneton, Sneasel, and Feralgator, the Team Rocket, Executive's Vileplume, and Red's Venusaur, Blastoise, and Charizard. Electabuzz functions pretty much the same as Ampharos, this includes Lance's Dragonite, and that's pretty much it. So you guys remember the mod trap you get in the department store, right? Yeah, we're gonna need it again for Whitney, except it's only gonna be temporary. Why? Because no trade evolutions. Finding Pokemon are not gonna be permanent members of this team. Tyro can be obtained, but that's obtained way later. And when I mean way later, I'm talking about pre-elite four, and Tyro is only level 10. So training it would be a huge pain in the butt. So yeah, use the mod trap from the Golden Run department store, go capture a drowsy in Route 34, and trade it. That mod trap will shred Whitney, I promise you that. Coming up next, we have one of my favorite additions to this team being Espeon. Now look, Umbreon might be my favorite, but like all the other evolutions, I still really like Espeon. It makes me sad to say it too, but for a Jota playthrough, Espeon just is more useful than Umbreon is. We need a second Pokemon, and we have to replace Alakazam. In this remaster, we are following the no trade evolution and version exclusive rules. Yeah, it doesn't have access to the elemental punches, but what are you gonna do? This is the next best option. However, being the next best thing isn't a really bad thing in Espeon's case. It's got fantastic special attack and speed, and has at least a good enough move pool to work with in this generation, having decent psychic type attacks. So getting an Espeon is gonna be a bit of a pain in the butt. However, that's the price we have to pay if we're not gonna be using trade evolutions. Now first, you're gonna to wanna to go get a Ditto from Route 34, just below Goldenrod City. Next, you'll get Eevee from Bill in Goldenrod City. After you receive it, take the two of the daycare and get them to make an egg. This isn't breaking the egg move rule as we aren't doing this for an actual egg move. The purpose is to get a lower leveled Eevee as the one you get from Bill is level 20, making the potential Espeon incapable of learning confusion, which is the only second type move it learns until level 36, making it practically useless. My recommendation for the newly hatched Eevee to get it to an Espeon as quickly as possible so you don't miss that level 16 mark is to keep it in the front of your party. Ride on your bike with it a lot, battle with it while making sure it doesn't faint, and taking it to the Haircut Brothers. Again, this is a lot of tedious work, but this is what you have to do if you want a decent psychic type Pokemon during your playthrough without trading. Other psychic Pokemon like Slowpoke are too slow, and so is Hypno. I know I've used Slowbro before, but the circumstances were different, Espeon's god tier, and is now your best shot. So with that long exposition out of the way, here are the moves we have for Espeon. Psybeam, Psychic, 
Hidden Power and Shadow Ball. Yeah, Espeon is definitely a lot better in later generations. The lack of physical special split really hurts Espeon in these earlier generations, but Espeon's physical attack isn't too horrible, so it's not the end of the world. What we care about the most are the second time moves. So... Yeah. Anyways, Psybeam and Psychic are both level up moves learned at level 36 and 47, respectively. Again, just use Confusion until then. Next is Hidden Power, which is a TM given to you by Men in His House at Lake of Rage. And Shadow Ball's TM is given to you by Morty after you beat him. I know it's physical, but it's the best we got. With these moves, Espeon can do well against Morty's team, just be careful of the ghost type moves, Chuck's team, Will's team, Koga's Aridos, Muck, and Crobat. Bruno's team aside from Onyx, Karen's Gengar, Misty's Starmie, Erica's Victory Bell, Janine's team, Sabrina's team, Blue's Alakazam and Exeggutor, your rival's Golbat, Gengar, and Alakazam, and finally Red's Espeon and Venusaur. Yeah, you'll have to go through a lot to get this Pokemon, and some might even feel it's not worth it, but even with all the crap, I still think Espeon is a solid Pokemon to have, and it definitely deserves to be here. In our number 5 spot, we have the Wild Bull Pokemon. In the early days of Pokemon, Tauros was actually fairly good. In fact, Smogun even has it in the OU tier in Generation 2 as a testament to that. It has very solid stats of great attack and defense and amazing speed. It even has a pretty decent move pool to mess around with, which is always nice. You get Tauros in Route 38, which you'll have to be patient for as it only has a 4% encounter rate. But like always, you'll have to trust me when I say it's worth it. Now for its moves, we have Rock Smash, Strength, Earthquake, and Thrash. Rock Smash's TM is given to you by the man near Sudowoodo once you've gotten rid of it. Strength is given to you by a sailor in Olivine City. Earthquake is located on Victory Road, and finally Thrash is a level up move learned at level 43. With these moves, Tauros can do well against Jasmine's team with Rock Smash, Price's Dugon and Pylosuan, Koga's Muck, Bruno's Onyx, Karen's Umbreon, Gengar, and Houndoom, Brock's entire team, Missy's Lapras, Lieutenant Surge's team, Janine's Weezing, Blaine's team, Blue's Radon and Arcanine, your rival Sneasel, Magneton and Gengar, and finally Red's Pikachu and Snorlax. And in our final spot, we have another longtime veteran in the best team series being Lapras. Lapras has showed up multiple times and has always been pretty useful on our journeys. It's got really solid stats having a lot of HP and being a pretty decent mixed attacker, allowing it to effectively use its decent arsenal moves. Lapras really isn't all that difficult to get. Now you will need a temporary Pokemon to surf on to get Lapras, so anything that can learn surf will do. Just use a sentry or something. So on a Friday night, which you're able to change it to in game, simply go as deep as into the cave as you can possibly go. Go to the southernmost pond and bam, you got yourself a level 20 Lapras. Now for its moveset, we're keeping it real simple. Surf for stab and earlier transport. Confuse Ray or Paris Song, either will work, it's really up to you. Ice Beam and finally Psychic. Surf is obtaining at Critique City and is needed to get to Lapras in the first place, so you'll be able to give it Surf as soon as you catch it. Confuse Rate and Paris Song are both level up moves. Learn to level 22 and level 29. It's really up to you to choose which one you want. Confuse Rate is nice because it's just simple and it gives a solid chance for your Pokemon's opponent to hurt itself in Confusion. Paris Song can be nice if you want to straight up KO and don't mind sacrificing Lapras, even though you could pretty much just switch it out. Pretty easy to do. Although I would still consider this to be a last ditch effort and not a go to move. Ice Beam is a level up move on level 36, and finally the second TM can be obtained from Mr. Psychic in Saffron City. Obviously, the fourth move cannot be learned until we reach Kanto, so just use whatever you'd like as a fourth move until then. I would recommend just keeping Body Slam on it, as it's a very strong base 85 attack. With this move set, Lapras is well against Jasmine Steelix, just watch out for Rock Throw, Price's Pile of Swine, Claris Street Dragonair, Will Zatu and Exeggutor, Koga's Crobat, Bruno's Onyx, Karen's Vileplume, Murkrow and Houndoom, Lance's team aside from Gyarados, Brock's Graveler, Rhyhorn, and Onyx, Erica's entire team, Janine's entire team, Blaine's team, Blue's Pidgeot, Rhydon, Exeggutor, and Arcanine, your rivals Crobat and Gengar, and finally Red's Venusaur and Charizard. So as you can see, even though Lapras doesn't get psychic until later on, it still does pretty well throughout Johto, but it can really go to town once its moveset is completed. Well, that pretty much wraps up this best team for Jota Remastered. I think this team is a much better version than the original best team was. A lot of the holes were fixed, and hopefully this time I don't get as many complaints in the comment section, but it is the best team, so one of the not complaints. I hope this satisfies the majority of you, though. Doing two best teams in one week was exhausting, but to me, it was well worth it. Alternate starter best team should return soon enough as well. What did you guys think of the team, though? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch I stream a lot of Pokemon content and Nintendo content like Shiny Hunting, Showdown Battles, Explorers of Sky, Zelda, Fire Emblem, Smash Brothers, Borderlands, you name it, I play it. Want to support me further, further in Game Club Perks? Check out my Patreon. Dan Leon, Lady Crimson, Pal491, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Awesome Lego, Jarrett Weezosted, and Sodden Grider did, and I want to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrion, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.